Hi, I'm Neela. I'm Wesley. I'm Jeremiah, and we're the Lumineers. Thanks for watching Music News. Wesley, Jeremiah, Neela, it's great to meet you, the Lumineers. How are you doing today? Good, yeah, how are you? Thank you. Looking forward to the show tonight? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, certainly. Congratulations on the new album, Cleopatra. It sounds amazing. What was the ambition behind the record? To time? make a second record, <laughs> mostly. Uh, yeah, we, we, we went really far on one album, but I think uh, it was time to turn the page and make some new material. and then tore on that material because it, it was a it was a short first record so we struggled to sort of fill that space of a typical headliner spot uh, and we really liked to write so it was it was kind of a long time to wait around to, to it took three years to tour so it was nice to get back in and and write again yeah no I mean you hold yourself up in the hilltop studio to record it why did you sort of take that approach well we thought no distractions or less distractions would be good for us. And, you know, it was uh, originally the idea maybe in somewhere in Colorado and more of an off the beaten path, sort of more rural, uh, secluded type environment. But we found this place uh, through the producer, Simon Felice. Yeah. Actually, this guy right here. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and he was the producer. He knew someone at this uh, place called the Clubhouse, and it was the perfect place to record. Great. And, um, yeah, where did you delve for songwriting inspiration, as it were? I think some of it had to do with the, the time you spend on the road and the changes um, you inevitably face as a group, as individuals in this group that suddenly is getting attention where you didn't really have those expectations. Um, and a lot of it just has to do with people that you meet that have these stories that are really compelling and you're trying to turn that into a song selfishly. You know, you meet somebody with a great story and that's how a lot of writers, I think, think we're sort of vampires for good stories, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Did, did you write a lot of it on the road? <clears throat> no, to be fair, no. A lot of the like smaller ideas, yeah, they may have sprung up, but I don't think uh, we're very adept at, at writing songs and completing them in any sort of meaningful way um, on the road. We, we tried, but we weren't very good at it, at least this last go around, so... Yeah, um, but you know the first album obviously went amazingly well as platinum, Grammy nominated. Has that in itself put a lot of pressure your way, as it were, for the second? I think it crept in at one point. You know the idea of this sophomore slump or the idea of disappointing lots of fans, and then once we finished the first single, Ophelia, um, we could kind of move on. You know, we once that song was done, the writing process, one hundred percent. It was the cornerstone of the album we felt and we said right, now we can proceed to get deeper and continue to finish this album but without one song done you know you're just sort of you feel like you're forever on day one and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Day, like every day is the same and then once you see a mp3 safely hidden on your computer you're like all right it's the first do, post in a way i this. suppose yeah now it's the second exactly, you're exactly. on your way yeah um, well, I mean, on music news, you've only ever had five star reviews. I'm glad to say. What What is it about the music that connects with the listeners so well? Do you think? It's mathematical. No. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody we just heard say say that all these all these really popular songs, it's like simple math or something, and all these evil evil geniuses behind closed doors are creating these songs that people are meant to mass consume. Um, but I I don't know. I think part of uh, what I was fascinated by with writing albums or songs at all was just the brevity of it all just trying to say a lot in a short period of time or pack in all this all these uh this uh densely packed almost journey and then you say how long was that song this is uh, three minutes or four minutes or whatever it is and you can't believe it like on i feel like an example of that was submarines on our first album where it feels like a four to five minute song when i listen to it because it's so dense it's true, all these yeah. moments and then you go back and it's like under three minutes and I think that excited me that idea that challenge of trying to make it work in that in that little box and so and I think watching looking at liner notes on let's say a Beatles record some of them and them all being two and one minute uh, it felt really ambitious so uh, we wanted to keep some of that alive you know with the second record I think too a big thing me and Wes and then when we moved to Denver with Neela you know even in New Jersey though we'd get these demo EPs from other bands that would spend so much money five ten 20,000 on an EP that really no one was going to listen to with these yeah. long 
intros to the album as if it was like they were, thought they were in Dark Side of the Moon and <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that but me and Wes sort of took notes and then when we met Neela we were like let's just make it concise and from that Denver it really started to skyrocket but it was just like yeah I don't know we learned some things I think from our peers and other people making music that was like what are they doing why is it so long or yeah, and it's a definite art form, you know, a lot of people just can't, can't do it, simple as that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you seem to have the skill, but I mean, on, you know, you seem to be conquering the world live as well. You spent a lot of the last three years on tour. Is that, is that almost the best part of the job for you, touring? I mean, yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about there's like 23 hours in the day that you're filling for that one hour, and I think if that got boring, we wouldn't con continue doing it, and I think we love playing live. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, and online as well, you seem to be spreading like wildfire. Obama's also a fan. <laughs> Have the videos become almost as important as the songs now? The music videos? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a huge viewer of music videos until recently. Um, so I kind of thought they were dead for a while, but now it seems like because it's, it's a way to hear the songs. Yeah, yeah. It's a further way to sort of project what you're trying to project as the artist um, to sort of, I don't know, further your message, I guess. So it is this vehicle. If you can find a talented, uh, you know, person who makes music videos, it's, it's amazing. But honestly, like on our first music video cycle of the first album, I think it was, we were so busy, it almost felt like an obligation. And we didn't really, we let some people just take the reins and run with it because we were just so... Um, haggard from the road we were just run through you know it was just so we had very little left to give so someone's like what's your idea for the music video and it's like i don't know i don't know so this time around it's been it's been interesting to hear the treatments and to, to think like oh how does that make me feel about this song because a lot of people go to youtube now over anything else to listen exactly to that's what i mean that has become the medium so yeah. video is almost back in a way yeah yeah, yeah. mtv yeah. might have died but the music video yeah. came out today too yeah no exactly we'll have that on the bottom <laughs> <laughs> i mean but the songs do conjure up images as well sort of visuals in the mind is that is that also a sort of conscious effort when when you're writing or is that just just what happens naturally i think it depends i i feel like what when i'm writing uh, a song like lyrically that is i think the, uh, I think I got a little jaded by some of the things I was hearing that were in popular music that I really ascribed to older artists that were telling me stories and creating all these great characters that I felt like I was in a room with or almost they were alive to me. And it kind of devolved into this, this is how I'm feeling and it's very vague and general. And there's an artistic way to do that, but I, I really like... Like Ophelia is a, a not a linear song in that way. It's very uh, uh, just stream of consciousness. But uh, a lot of our songs, I think, do f try to tell this story, and that that I think is uh, is what we set out to do in a sense is create these characters that that sort of live with you beyond the beyond the music. You know? And the video for for Ophelia, what what's what's that about? Uh, our friend Isaac, uh, uh, he directed Stubborn Love. Uh, during our first album cycle and uh, he came up with this concept I was describing to him how I felt um, we were all touring so much I think we all at different points felt like there was us watching ourselves play shows or something it's hard to explain but you just you play a song a thousand times suddenly you're playing it but you almost have this out of body detached feeling from what you're doing it's almost like you're covering someone else's music or and uh, so I was describing that to him, and then he cre created this concept of, you know, if I'm on stage and it sort of peels away, and there's one guy that walks back up to the microphone, and there's another of, this, of me, but walking off the stage and sort of walking down the street and dancing to the music in my own little space, my own little world. Um, and then they had to teach me how to dance through a choreographer, and uh, it was sort of like singing in the rain, I guess you could say. I don't know, like this old-timey. <laughs> I bet. And it, and it was raining that day. So it was pretty. It was pretty special. It was L.A., so it doesn't rain ever. So, um, yeah, it was neat. Fantastic. Well, thanks a lot for your time. I'm really looking yeah. forward to tonight. Uh, Anything else to say to music news watchers? What do people usually say? What kind of you stuff? Got any Italian up your sleeve? <laughs> is this for the U.K. or is this for Italy? Yeah, it's for all over the world. All over the world. I could say ciao a tutti. Noi siamo the Lumineers. Sono felice di essere qua.
Ooh. Fantastic. Is that good? Just Fantastic. Just, 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 just